So when you think of premium GPUs, PMY probably isn't the first name that comes to mind. They don't go all in on massive RGB setups or extreme cooling solutions like some other brands, but they've been making solid, no-nonsense cards for years. And now we finally have one back on the test bench, the RTX 5070 Ti OC. Now, this is a card designed to sit in that sweet spot between high-end performance and hopefully not so high-end pricing. But in 2025, where GPU pricing makes less sense than ever, does it actually land where it should? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I may be old, but I've got character. Four gig of RAM, integrated graphics, Windows Vista. Yeah, I'm a bit too young for you. I may not be fast, but I glow in 16 million colors. 30 FPS on 1080p medium settings. No, sorry, I go for more than just good looks. Oh. Oh, hello there. Ryzen 7 9800X3D, strong and intelligent. MSI MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi, built for speed and stability. You'd never let me down, would you? MSI RTX 5090 Supreme SoC, you're so playful. Be Quiet Shadow Base 800FX, tall, dark and handsome. And you come with four ARGB fans. You really know how to set the mood. Five years labor, two years parts, 12 month collect and return warranty. I think I'm in love. Oh. The Ultra 5090 system from Cyberpower PC, the only gaming PC worth swiping right on. Click the link in the description to find out more. First, we need to address the biggest issue, pricing. The RTX 50 series is still in that weird phase where MSRP means almost nothing, and availability is, frankly, a hot mess. On paper, the 5070 Ti should be a great option for anyone who wants strong performance without jumping into the pressing black hole with the 5080 or 5090. But in reality, some models are already creeping past their expected pricing, which, well, puts them dangerously close to what the RTX 5080 was supposed to cost. Then there's stock availability. Some listings vanish instantly, others are sitting at scalper prices. And at this point, the 5070 Ti is at risk of falling into the same cycle that we've seen before. Limited stock, inflated prices, and just, well, artificial scarcity, which in all honesty, no consumer wants. So onto the card itself. This is an overclocked model, which means a slight bump in clock speeds out of the box. The boost clock comes in at 2,572 megahertz, which is just under a 5% increase over stock. Not bad, but also not game changing, since a 5% clock speed increase doesn't necessarily mean a 5% FPS boost. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Memory speed stays the same at 1750 megahertz or 28 gigabits per second effective, which is actually pretty standard for all kind of 5070 Ti series cards. But as we've seen before, there's usually plenty of headroom for overclocking, which we will get into a little bit later. Now, here's where things get interesting. PMY is using the exact same cooler on this OC model as they do on their non-OC version. So while you're paying more for the factory overclock, the physical hardware itself is identical to the standard 5070 Ti non-OC. No extra cooling, no premium components, just a factory overclock slapped on top with a $50 premium. But that's not the I guess end of the world, considering some competitors sometimes actually demand a higher premium than that, well, for the same kind of bumping clock speed. So I'd actually say it's pretty conservative. That said, it's still actually a solid cooler. It's 300 millimeters long, 120 millimeters high, and 60 millimeters thick, making it a proper triple slot card. And I mean actual triple slot, not just the cooler that overhangs past two slots. It also weighs in at 1,430 grams, which isn't particularly heavy. So it doesn't actually come with a support bracket of any kind, but honestly, at this size, it doesn't really need one either. Now the design is simple with an all black plastic shroud with three fans with the middle one spinning in reverse to help push heat across the heatsink. And unlike some other cards, PMY actually uses a twin heatsink solution connected to the cold plate with seven heat pipes with the shroud kind of covering part of the heatsink along the top. But otherwise, overall really, it just, well kind of looks quite industrial. And despite being plastic, it actually still feels very, very solid. Now, because this is the same cooler as the MSRP version, there's no RGB, no dual BIOS, and just, well, no extra features. And honestly, that's fine by me. At this price point, cutting down on unnecessary extras actually makes sense, or at least 
I guess it would if pricing wasn't, you know, the mess that it currently is. Now, in terms of design, it's a bit of a mixed bag. The full metal backplate, well, looks absolutely great, especially with the included thermal pads to help with heat dissipation. And it's kind of this matte, but ever so slightly textured material. And I kind of wish that that style carried over to the front of the card. Instead, we get these kind of glossy plastic bits that just don't feel as premium. And honestly, I think they kind of cheapen the look a little. But if you're installing the card horizontally, as I'm sure most people probably will be, you well, you won't see it anyway. So it's not really a big issue. Now for the IO, it's exactly what you'd expect for a 5070 Ti. Three display ports, one HDMI, and then power wise, we've got the standard 12 volt two by six connector. Though PMI do include a triple eight pin adapter in the box. So nothing surprising here, but just the essentials. And again, that probably actually helps to keep the cost down. Now, one thing that we always do in these reviews is push the card to its limit and see how much extra performance we can squeeze out. Now, since this is already a factory overclocked model, any tweaks that we make on top of the pre-applied boost also means that we're just increasing the overclock that little bit more. We managed to push the boost clock up by another 360 megahertz, which gave us a 14% increase over the default RTX 5070 Ti boost clock. While on the memory side, just like other 50 series cards, we hit the maximum 3000 megahertz effective, which translates to a real world speed bump of 375 megahertz. Then running an hour long loop of F124, we compared stock and overclock results against our MSI reference card to see how things stacked up. Temperatures sat around 72 degrees on average at stock, while the overclock only added an extra one degree, which is well within margin of error. While memory junction temperatures remained practically identical across all runs. Fan speeds hovered around 1600 RPM at both stock and overclock settings, never getting particularly loud when compared to other fans in the system. And while power draw did increase slightly with the higher power limit when overclocked, settling at 312 watts on average, things still aligned with kind of where we'd expect them to be for this class of card. Now, when it comes to raw performance, the PNY RTX 5070 Ti OC does hold its own in the stack, consistently outperforming the MSI Ventus, which we use as a reference 5070 Ti, considering there's no Founders Edition, and the Inno 3D X3 across most titles. It even edges out the RTX 4080 Super in some cases, though usually by a small margin. Then overclocking gives us a, another solid push, widening the gap between competitors and making it one of the strongest 5070 Ti cards that we've had in our labs. Though there's nothing really stopping you overclocking the other 5070 Ti's to kind of level the playing field a little bit. Now in standard rasterization, the PMY card is anywhere from three to 7% faster than the competition, with notable wins in Black Myth Wukong and Cyberpunk 2077, where it beats out both the Ventus and the Inno 3D by what I'd class as a fair margin. Overclocking then further improves performance, adding around four to 8% on average, which in turn helps to keep it ahead of its closest rivals. But again, overclocking them cards could see this kind of all change. Now, ray tracing performance is where things get a little bit more interesting. The PMY OC model remains the top performing 5070 Ti that we've had, but only by a one to two FPS advantage over its competitors. And again, overclocking gives it a further 9% boost. But since ray tracing is already demanding, this actually only really kind of translates to marginal real world gains. Now, if I'm being picky, the one area where the card does fall behind slightly is in the lows in some games. Though in this case, overclocking can maybe actually help to stabilize things. But I guess if consistency is a priority, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Though we have actually seen sort of the lows quite dramatically affected from driver update to driver update. So this could all change in the near future. Overall, the PMY RTX 5070 TIOC is one of the stronger options in its category, offering solid gains over competitors at stock and even better improvements when overclocked. If you're looking for a 5070 Ti with a bit of extra headroom, this is definitely one to consider, though offerings from AMD definitely make it a harder option now than when it first launched, considering they come in, well, a lot closer in terms of performance, but quite a bit cheaper. So how does the 5070 Ti OC from PMY actually stack up? Well, in terms of raw performance, it holds up surprisingly well, consistently beating out the MSI Ventus and the Inno 3D X3. But there's some important context here. Those are MSRP models, while this one comes in slightly higher at $799. So not a huge price jump, but it does make you wonder. If you can overclock the non-OC version to match this, then that could be the better value pick at $750 MSRP. And that brings us to the real issue. 
can you actually find it at that price? Realistically, no. Stock is a mess. Prices are all over the place. Some retailers list it at MSRP, but good luck grabbing one before it sells out. And well, we're still dealing with inflated pricing, scalpers, and just the usual launch chaos, even over a month since its launch. Now, putting that all to kind of one side, the card itself, let's talk about that. Is it good? Yes. Is it a clean, no-nonsense design that doesn't scream gamer with flashy RGB? Yes. The cooler's sleek, it's simple, it blends into any build, whether it's for gaming or workstation-based purposes. There's no distractions, no gimmicks, just solid performance, all while staying cool and quiet. Now, as a generational leap over the RTX 4000 series, yeah, the 5070 Ti in terms of GPU core isn't groundbreaking, unless you care about multi-frame generation. But if you're upgrading from a 3000 series or older, the gains are significant, especially with ray tracing and frame generation becoming more of a factor in, I guess, the latest modern games and games that are gonna be coming out in the future. And that's kind of where we land. If this card was readily available at $800, it's a fairly easy recommendation, but in a world where pricing is still unpredictable, you'll have to decide if the performance bump is worth the extra premium. If you can snag it for retail, great choice. If not, like we said in our launch day review, then yeah, you might just wanna hold out. Then on top of that, since the launch of the 5070 Ti, AMD have released their cheaper, but almost comparative 9070 XT. And that just throws another spanner into the works. If however, you're specifically looking for a 5070 Ti or you have an allegiance to Nvidia, then the PMY is good. Though again, pricing is always gonna be the thing that I guess just not quite holding it back, but is definitely an obstacle in its way. So there we go. Thanks for watching. You probably noticed that we actually changed up the style a little for this video. So if you prefer this to our normal way of doing things behind the desk and everything, let us know in the comment section and by giving us a like on this video. If you love what we do though, and you wanna kind of have even more cool stuff, including exclusive extras, um, as well as helping everything that we do on the channel, then you can help support us through Patreon. The link is always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.